Welcome to the Blue Mass Knits. Today I will be teaching you how to knit this drop shoulder cardigan. So if you know how to work a knit stitch and a purl stitch, you can knit this cardigan. This is a perfect project for beginners who are looking to become an advanced beginner. You can find the free PDF on Ravelry or you can buy a copy on Etsy to support the channel. Both options are linked down below. All the materials and information can be found written down below as well. And I have another video talking about all the materials and how to choose a size and the basic kind of starter information there. So this cardigan is worked flat. So you start with two front panels and then you work a back panel and then you join everything at the shoulders. And then you pick up and knit your sleeves down flat. And at the very end, after you block your project, you seam from the sleeve cuff all the way down the side of your cardigan. I will walk you through every step of this pattern from starting your panels to seaming the shoulders to picking up the sleeves to blocking to seaming everything is covered in this pattern this pattern and tutorial took hundreds of hours to make so if you'd like to support the channel please consider buying one of my knitting patterns on etsy or ravelry both are linked down below or a great way to support the channel is by liking the video and subscribing it really helps push my videos out to other people so any of those would be great i really hope that you enjoy this pattern and this video now let's get into it. We're going to start with the left front hem. So refer to your pattern. It will be helpful for you to have the pattern on hand and using your rib needles, you're going to cast on as many stitches as your size needs. Remember I'm knitting a miniature version, so you will have many more stitches than me. After you're done with your cast on, we're gonna work a setup row, which is a wrong side row. Go ahead and turn your work. We're going to knit seven, followed by a repeat of a purl one, knit one until you have one stitch left, which you will purl. So go ahead and knit seven. And now we're going to repeat a purl one, knit one, until you have one stitch left, which you will purl. When we have one stitch left, you just purl it and turn your work. And now we get into our hem repeat. Row one is a right side row. You're going to work a repeat of a knit one, purl one, to the last eight stitches. That's important, to so the last eight, and then you knit eight. And then for row two, which is a wrong side row, you're going to knit seven, followed by a repeat of a purl one, knit one, to the last stitch which you will purl so our row two is the exact same as our setup row so for row one work a knit one purl one until you have eight stitches left on your left hand needle and once you get down to the last eight you're going to knit all of them it should look something like this you've got your ribbing and then you have your edging here as well which will be in garter go ahead and turn your work for row two we're going to knit seven and then work a purl one knit one to the last stitch which we will purl this is exactly the same as your setup row, so go ahead and do that. And that was a repeat of row one and two. You're going to work rows one and two seven times for a total of 14 rows or until your hem measures approximately two and a half inches or six and a half centimeters from the cast on edge. Now something that you might find very helpful is to section off your seven garter stitches with a stitch marker. So placing a stitch marker in between your ribbing and your garter. And this can be helpful for the entire panel as well. So follow row one and work in ribbing until you get to the last eight stitches. And once we get down to the last eight stitches, it says to knit eight. Even though it says eight, only seven of the edge stitches are actually in our garter pattern. So we need to knit one, which completes all of our rib stitches, and then place a marker on our right hand needle and knit across. So now when your row two says to knit seven, you'll knit seven and then you'll reach the marker and continue in rib. So you'll just need to remember that on right side rows, when it says knit one purl one until you have eight stitches left, that the eighth stitch is right before your marker. But once you get into the body section, it will be much easier. So go ahead and work your hem until you have as many rows as the pattern tells you. And I will meet you back here for the body. Once your hem is as long as the pattern says or as long as you want it to be, we're going to go ahead and switch to our gauge needles and begin our body. The body repeat is pretty much entirely in stockinette while maintaining the garter edging here. So row one, which is a right side row, you're going to knit across. And row two, the wrong side row is a knit seven and then purl across. And the amount of times that you work these two rows is dependent on which length of your cardigan that you would like. There's the shorter version, which is more like a regular length. And then there is a longer version. Refer to your pattern for the full instructions. I will walk you through the first two rows. So what I like to do is knit off of my rib needles onto my gauge needles. My right hand needle is my gauge needle and my left hand needle is my rib needle. So for row one, very simple. You're just going to knit across. 
You've knit off your rib needles and you're now on your gauge needles. And for row two, you're going to knit seven and then purl across. So I've knit seven. If you have a marker, you can just slip it and purl to the end of the row. The whole rest of your panel will be worked in the same way. So all of your right side rows will be knit rows and all your wrong side rows will be knitting the garter edging and then purling the rest of your stitches. So that is a repeat of rows one and two. You can refer to your pattern to see how many times you wanna knit this. I have also written how long your piece should measure from the cast on edge if you prefer to go from that. But if you've matched gauge, you can just go by the repeats. So go ahead and do all of those rows and I will meet you back here for the left front armhole shaping. Once you've finished your body section, it's time to work the armhole shaping. We're essentially going to bind off a few stitches here at the armhole edge. This is a miniature. Yours will be much, much longer than mine. So for row one, we're going to bind off four stitches and we're just going to do a very standard knit bind off. So go ahead and knit two. And now we're going to pass the first stitch over the second and off our needle. So you can use your fingers or your knitting needle. So go ahead and hold on to this second stitch with your index finger, slide them down to the edge, pinch the first stitch and pull it up and over your second stitch and off. Now you've just bound off one stitch, knit one, and repeat. Grab the first one, be sure the second doesn't slide off, pull it up and over, knit one. And now I'm gonna show you how to use your knitting needle for it. Still hold on to the second one, go into the front loop of that first stitch with your left hand needle, and pull it up, over, and off. That's three bound off stitches, so knit one more, and bind off your fourth stitch and that is the armhole shaping so just go ahead and knit across and then row two is the same that you worked for all of your body just knit seven and then purl across and then rows three and four are the same exact repeat that your body was so knitting across your whole right side row and knitting the garter edge on your wrong side row and purling the rest of the row so you're going to work rows three and four x amount of times depending on your size so go ahead and do that and I will meet you back here for the bind off. Once you've worked your entire armhole section, it's time to bind off. Your bind off should be worked on a right side row. We're going to work a standard knit bind off. This is the same process that we used when we were binding off for our armhole. So begin by knitting two. And then you're going to pass the first one over the second and off the needle. You can use your fingers or the knitting needle. And that's it, you just keep knitting one stitch and then pulling the first over the second and off. And you do this all the way across. And if you placed a marker, you can just move it once you get to it and keep knitting one, binding off one, and you do this all the way across. And then when it comes to the final stitch, I like to just kind of pull it out. Cut yourself a tail, about eight to 12 inches just to be safe. And now I like to take this loop. If you want, you can thread your tail through it but I like to just pull it out. I think it looks slightly neater. Either way, it doesn't matter a ton because we're going to be using this seam here as our shoulder seam. So this will be kind of tucked into a seam at the top of your shoulder. But there you have it. That is how you work the left front. Yours will be much bigger, but this is the general shape where you've got a longer body, a little bit of a bind off, and then your armhole will be most likely be shorter than your body. So now that your left front is done, it's time to work the right front. This is the mirror version of your left front. When looking at the knit side of your work, the left front will have the garter edge on the left side. And when looking at the knit side of your right panel, it'll have the garter on the right side so that your garter edgings are facing each other. Other than that, it's pretty much the exact same thing. So using your rib needles, cast on the same amount of stitches that you did for your left front. And for our setup row, we're going to work a purl one, knit one, until you have eight stitches left, which will work a purl one, knit seven. So you'll notice that this is pretty much the same thing, just with the garter edging on the other side. So work in the purl one, knit one rib until you get to the last eight stitches. Once you have eight stitches left, you're going to work one purl stitch. And then if you like using a marker, you can place it after that purl stitch when you have seven stitches on your left hand needle. And then you're going to knit those last seven stitches. And then for row one, you're going to knit eight, followed by a repeat of a purl one, knit one across. So you'll have knit seven when you reach the marker and you need to knit one more so that you've knit eight. And then you work your purl one, knit one rib all the way across. And then row two's work the same as our setup row. 
So you need to work rows one and two a total of seven times, which is 14 rows, or the same amount that you knit for your left front. So go ahead and do that, and I'll meet you back here for your right front body section. Once your right hem is done, it's time to move on to the body. So here we're going to switch to our gauge needles and then work in our stockinette pattern while maintaining the garter edging here. So here I have my rib needles and now I'm grabbing my gauge needles. I'm going to knit off my rib onto my gauge. So for row one, which is a right side row, we're going to knit across. Slip the marker when you come to it if you have one. And once you're done with the row, you're done with your rib needles for the rest of this panel. Turn your work and for row two, we're going to purl across until you get to the last seven stitches, which is your garter edging, and then you will knit them. So go ahead and purl to the last seven. Slip the marker if you have one, and then knit the last seven stitches. And that's it for your body. It's virtually the same thing as your left hem, but with the garter edging on the opposite side. So go ahead and work in stockinette while maintaining the garter edging as written. This should match the same amount of rows that you worked on your other front panel. So go ahead and work all those rows and I'll meet you back here for your armhole shaping. Once you have your body section done, it's time to work the armhole shaping. This is very similar to the left front, but we're going to do the bind off on the wrong side row. So we need to work row one, which is just a knit across row. So knit across your first right side row, the same way that you did across the entire body, and then turn your work. And for row two, which is a wrong side row, we're going to bind off four stitches purl to the last seven, and then knit those seven garter stitches. We're going to do the bind off purl wise. To begin, purl two stitches. And then the same way that we did on the other front, we're going to pass the first stitch over the second and off. So hold on to the second one, pinch the first, pull over and off. That's one bound off stitch, purl one, and repeat. Pinch, pull over and off, Purl one. You can also do this with your needle into the front loop of it, pull it over and off. That's three bound off. Purl one more and bind it off. And now we're going to purl until we have seven stitches left, which is our garter edging, which you will knit. Turn your work. So you're going to work rows three and four X amount of times, depending on your size. And then you're going to bind off on the right side using the same standard knit bind off that we worked for our left front. So if you need a refresher, you can rewind back to that part of the video. Your pattern should look something like this. When you line up your two panels with the knit side showing, which is the right side, your garter edging should be facing each other and your bind off armhole shaping should be on the outside. So go ahead and finish the rest of your right front and I will meet you back here for your back panel. Once you've finished your right front panel, it's time to start on the back panel. This has worked almost identical to the front panels. The only difference is that you will not have a garter edging. You'll work a hem in ribbing, and then you'll just be in plain stockinette for the rest of the panel. So using your rib needles, you're going to cast on as many stitches as your size requires. So for our setup row, which is a wrong side row, you're going to work a purl two, followed by a knit one, purl one, repeat, until you have one stitch left, which you will purl. So go ahead and purl two, And then knit one, purl one, until you have one stitch left. And then once you get to the last stitch, you're going to purl it. Once your setup row is done, you can start your repeat. Row one is a knit two, followed by a repeat of a purl one, knit one, until you have one stitch left, which you will knit. And then row two is the exact same thing as your setup row. So for row one, you're going to knit two, followed by a repeat of a purl one, knit one, until you have one stitch left. And when you get to the last stitch, you just knit it. So the ribbing on the back panel has two knit stitches next to each other on the beginning and end of your right side rows, which will be two purl stitches on the beginning and end of each of your wrong side rows. So row two is exactly like your setup row, so you can rewind back to that row if you need a refresher, but work rows one and two a total of seven times for 14 rows, or the exact same amount of rows that you did for your front panels. Go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back here for your body. Once you've finished your hem, it's time to move on to the body. So the same as we did for the front panels, you're going to grab your gauge needle and we're going to knit off the rib onto our gauge. This body section is much easier than the front panels because you do not have a garter edging. Row one, you knit across and row two, you purl across. And you do this the same amount of times that you did on your front panels. 
So go ahead and knit off of your rib needles onto your gauge needles. At the end of your first row, you should have moved onto your gauge needles and you can put away your rib needles. So I'm not gonna walk you through the rest of the body because it's just plain stockinette, knitting on the right side rows and purling on the wrong side rows. So go ahead and do that as many times as the pattern tells you, the same as your front panels, and I'll meet you back here for the armhole shaping. So now that we've finished the body portion of our back panel, it's time to work a little bit of armhole shaping. We're going to bind off four stitches at the beginning of the next two rows for a total of eight stitches. So this will decrease about an inch on each side. And we like to do this in drop shoulder sweaters or cardigans because it helps kind of decrease bulk around the underarm when you're wearing it. We're on a right side row and we're going to start out by binding off four stitches. So go ahead and knit the first two stitches. And now we're going to pull that first knit stitch over the second and off our needle. There are two ways to do it. You can do it with your fingers or with your needle. I'm going to kind of hold on to the second one with my right index finger, slide them down to the edge, but don't let it slip off. And then we're going to pick up this first stitch and pull it over the second and off. So just kind of pinch it and pull it over and off. And that is one bound off stitch. Go ahead and knit one more and repeat the process. You can also do it with your needle like this. Hold on to that second stitch with our right index finger and then go into the front loop of the first stitch from left to right and pull it over and off. That is two bound off stitches. Knit one more and repeat. I'll show you again with your fingers. Just kind of pinch it and pull it over and off. So that is three bound off stitches and we want to do one more. So knit one more stitch. Pull that first over and off, and that's it. We've bound off four stitches. Go ahead and knit across the rest of the row. So at the start of row two, we are also going to bind off four stitches, but this time we're gonna do it purl-wise. So it's the same exact step, but instead of knitting your stitches, you're purling them. So go ahead and purl two. And now we need to pull the first stitch over the second and off. Same method applies. You go down towards the tip of the needle, hold on to the second one with your right index finger, and then pull the first up and over. And that is one bound off stitch. Go ahead and purl one more and repeat the process. Just pull the first over the second and off, and then purl one more. And you can also use your needle for this too. Hold on to that second one and pull the first over and off. That is three bound off stitches. We wanna purl one more stitch and then pull the final one over and off. And that is four bound off stitches. Go ahead and purl across to the end of the row. And now that we've done our back panel armhole shaping, we can go ahead and finish the rest of our plain rows. Row three, you're just going to knit across. Row four, you're just going to purl across. This is the same amount of rows that we worked for both of the front panels. So go ahead and do that and I will meet you back here for the bind off. Once you've finished all of your back armhole rows, it is time to bind off. Now we're gonna bind off in the exact same way that we did in the front panel and also the same way that we did for our armhole shaping. So go ahead and knit two, pull the first over the second and off and do that all the way across. And then you wanna cut yourself a tail that is about eight to 12 inches long so that we can sew our shoulders together. So now that your panels are all finished, it's time to join the front panels to the back panel using a shoulder seam. So we do this one at a time with each of the front panels. It doesn't matter which one you start with, but I'm going to start with what is technically the left panel when you're wearing it. So when it's laying flat on the table, you're going to have your armhole edges lining up on one side, and then the middle of your back panel lines up with the garter edging on your front panel and you want the right sides facing, so the knit side facing on both. So I told you to cut your back panel leaving a long strand of yarn. That is the strand that you're going to use for this section. I am actually going to use a contrasting color to make it easier for you guys to see. So you're going to need a tapestry needle. You wanna thread the tail from your back panel onto a needle. Go ahead and thread your tail through and you would be set to go attached to your back panel. I have a way more in-depth video that I will link here if you need extra help. But to begin, we're going to find the outside corner of our bottom piece, which is our front panel. So you don't have to be super picky about this. You just wanna kind of go into the furthest outside corner here. So 
So if I look and you want to go from back to front. So here is kind of a corner right here. I'm catching like the edge most stitch. You can see the two loops there. It's okay if you only catch one loop, that's okay too. You just want to kind of put it in the corner. So go ahead and pull through. And now we want to go to the top panel. We're looking for a full knit stitch and a knit stitch looks like a V. So if we look here, we're looking for a V that is close to our bind off edge and is a full knit stitch. So it looks like it has both legs of the V. So if we look here at the very edge, you can see a full V. It's got a right leg and a left leg and you're going to go into it exactly like this from right to left underneath both legs of it. And then you can go ahead and pull through and you don't have to pull super tight yet. We'll tighten it up later, but now you have just a little bit of a connection between the two. My panels are much smaller than yours probably will be. So if you want, you can kind of pin in a general direction, pin these together, like pin your edge to like where you think it'll end up and then just pin it every inch or so across because yours will be a much wider panel. So you can go ahead and do that if you like. So we're going to be alternating. We just did a stitch on the top panel. So now we're going to go to the bottom panel. The easiest way to remember this is to find where your yarn is coming out of in the previous stitch, which is right here. And you're going to go back into that and pick up two legs. So on the top panel, you pick up a full stitch. It looks like a perfect V on the bottom. You're not going to do that. You're going to pick up half of one V and half of the other. So if we look closely, this right here is one V. This right here is one V. In between them, this is not a V. It's like having two knit stitches together and you're going to pick up the left leg of one and the right leg of the other. So that's what we're doing here. If we go into where our yarn is coming out of and pick up the next two legs from right to left, this right here is the left leg of your first stitch and the right leg of your next stitch. But again, the easiest way is to go back into the hole where your yarn was coming out of. So we have two legs picked up here and we go from right to left and pull through. And now we just kind of repeat this process. So we go back up to the top panel because we're alternating and the same concept applies. So we're finding where our last piece of yarn came out of in this panel and that would be right here. So I'm going to go into that hole where my yarn is coming out of and pick up the next two legs. So you can see that that makes a perfect V Go ahead and pull through from right to left and then back to the bottom. Our yarn is coming out of this hole here. So we go back into that hole and pick up the next two legs. This is not a perfect V. It is half of one V and half of the other. Pull through, go up to the top and we're just going to repeat this all the way across. So our yarn is right here. It's coming out of this hole. So we go back into it and pick up the next two loops which make up a full knit stitch or both legs of the V. Pull through and back to the bottom panel. Our last piece of yarn here comes out of this hole right there. Go back into it from right to left and pull through. And that's it. You're just going to do that all the way across. So you can just keep going. And then about every inch, inch and a half, you want to go ahead and pull on your working yarn that's attached to your tapestry needle. Go ahead and pull on it. It will kind of bunch up your seam here. Just pull on either end and it will flatten it out. Your seam should be lining up perfectly with columns of V's going down into columns of V's. It looks almost seamless. You can definitely tell that there's a little bit of a ridge here, but other than that, it connects very well and you just keep going. So I have just finished a bottom section. So now I need to go to a top section and you do this all the way across. And I will show you what to do once you get to the garter section or your garter edging. So I've gotten to my garter section and if I kind of just pull up the bind off edge, I still have those V's. So we can just keep going as normal. My yarn is coming out of this hole right here. I go back in from right to left. And even though it is garter, I still can see that I have two legs there. And then the top is just normal because it's still stockinette. And even though it is garter, it's still pretty much the same thing because you still have your columns of V's here. So I go back into where I came out of from right to left, pull through. So I'm nearing the end here. If I go into the hole where my yarn is coming out of from right to left, pull through. And now I only have one loop left. 
So I go back up to the top, finish off, and then I pull tight and it bunches up like this. So I pull it apart and it will flatten out. You have one more loop left here on your front panel. Go back into where your yarn's coming out of and through that edge stitch, flip over. This is my seam, you can kind of see it. It doesn't really matter which direction you're going, but I'm going to go from top to bottom and just catch the seam. I'm not going into either the back or the front panel, just the seam here. And then I'm going to move over a stitch or two and go up the other direction. Again, just going into the seam like this and not going into the panels themselves. And I just do that a few times where I move over a stitch or two and go down. Move over a stitch or two and go up. And then to finish it off, you can just leave it like that because it's pretty well woven in after a few times. Or I kind of go just up through the middle of the seam. Again, not catching either of the panels. And if you want to be extra, extra secure, you can leave a loop. So don't pull your yarn all the way through and then go through that loop to kind of tie a knot. You don't have to do that. You can just weave it in and it will be secure. But if you feel like it's too loose, you can tie a knot there. That's how I weave in my ends. I just do it very quickly into the seam itself and not into either of the panels. I feel like that makes it much easier to hide. Just go ahead and do that with the rest of your tails. And then you can do the same thing with the other side. Here I have my right panel. When you're wearing it, it will be your right panel. You just wanna make sure that the right sides are facing. So the knit sides of your front panel and the knit sides of your back panel are showing and that the garter edge is on the inside towards the middle of your back panel, matching the other front panel. Rotate everything. So here I have my back panel, which is closer to me, my front panel, which is at the top. So my yarn that's attached to my front panel, which is nice and long, I'm going to thread into a yarn needle. Your yarn's coming out at the top. You're just going to weave it all together in the exact same way that you did here. So go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back here for these sleeves. So this cardigan has long sleeves that are tapered for a good fit. That means that they slowly decrease over time until you get to your wrist. So you need to have this amount of stitches in the end. If you don't wanna to listen to my instructions, you can just go ahead and pick up that many stitches. But I have figured out a way to get a perfect pickup rate so that you have an even looking pickup edge. So at first glance, this will look really confusing, but trust me, I will walk you through it. So for your sleeve pickup rate, you need to pick up a certain amount of stitches over a set amount of rows. I have five steps to follow in order to pick up the perfect amount of stitches for the amount of rows that are in the pattern. With the right side of your project facing you, which is the knit side, you're going to lay your armhole flat like this. So you've got the seam in the middle, and then your two armhole shaping ends. And as long as your right side is showing, your knit side, you can start on the right half. For one sleeve, this will be a front panel, and for your other sleeve, it will be the back panel. So you're going to start on the right, and we're going to pick up every bound off stitch. So that is four stitches. And then we need to pick up all the stitches between this armhole shaping and this armhole shaping. So in between your two bound off edges, you've got a certain amount of stitches that you need to pick up. And we're going to do this at three separate rates. So we do this so that it is evenly distributed. If we're looking at just our armhole shaping here, you're going to start out with a section of picking up one stitch for every row that you knit. And then we'll work a bigger section where you pick up one stitch for every two rows that you knit. So picking up a stitch for every other row, essentially. And then we end with picking up one stitch for every single row again. And this will give us a perfectly balanced amount of stitches picked up. And it's okay if you have to fudge a stitch or two here and there. So now I'll walk you through how to do each of the five steps. But you wanna take your yarn that you're going to be working with and wrap it around the middle finger on your right hand if you're a continental knitter and your left hand if you are an English knitter. But wrap it around like five or six times. And all this does is create tension so that when we're starting to work this row, your stitches aren't super sloppy, it gives you structure. To begin, we're actually going to start with these bound off stitches here. Remember that when we were working the front and back of our panels, we bound off a few stitches at the edge on both sides. First, we're going to focus on just this right half. So you can kind of turn your work a little bit. These were our bound off stitches. So for my sample, I only bound off three, but you should have bound off four. You can do this process with a crochet hook or a knitting needle. It doesn't matter, I will show you both ways. You can kind of look at the top here and you can see that there are some horizontal Vs. Each one of those Vs 
represents a stitch. For your project, there should be four of them. You've got this horizontal bind off edge and then it starts to go diagonal with this one right here going diagonal. That is not a bound off stitch, you can ignore that one. And then we have the rest here. Counting from left to right from that, you should have four stitches. For this sample, I did three, but you should have four. So go ahead and count from that diagonal stitch over, one, two, three, and then you should have four. Once you get to that four stitch, that is the one we're going to be starting with. There's kind of a curled stitch on the edge here. That's not what we're doing. It's the one just to the left of it, which should be four from this kind of gaping diagonal stitch. Okay, so just count from there, four stitches over, and then go from front to back underneath that horizontal stitch like this. Our yarn's attached to our middle finger, and what we're going to do is just work a yarn over. So bring our yarn underneath our needle around to the back like this. Kind of hold on to it with your index finger. We're kind of going to work what's similar to a bind off where we're going to pull this white stitch here, your bound off stitch, over that yarn over and off. Or you could also think about it as pulling the yarn over through the hole underneath this bound off stitch, whichever works for you. But hold on to that yarn over, slide down to the tip of your needle, and you're going to pull this stitch over that yarn over and off. You can go slow. And then we look up and our yarn is coming out of this furthest right horizontal V. So we move one more over, which is this one right here. So take your needle underneath both legs of that horizontal V from front to back. Should look something like this. You're on the very top edge and then you work another yarn over. So go underneath that needle and over top. And then again, we're going to do the same thing where we kind of pull this yarn over through that hole, which is the same thing as pulling these two strands over that yarn over and off. So slide down to the edge, keeping hold of your yarn over and kind of just pull them over like this. You can kind of wiggle your needle to get them to be a normal size. After you've picked up a couple, you can remove the yarn from your middle finger. So you can also do this with a crochet hook and I'll show you how to do that now. So if you prefer to do this with a crochet hook, you wanna do the same thing where you wrap the yarn around your middle finger on your right hand if you're a continental knitter like me or a finger on your left hand if you're an English knitter. So again, you find that kind of wonky diagonal stitch with a bigger hole next to it and you count over four stitches from there. So one, two, three, and then you would have a fourth. You see that fourth horizontal V, which is right here. You're going to go underneath both loops of it like this. You're just catching those two loops that make up that horizontal V. You're going to do a yarn over, so bring the yarn underneath the crochet hook and around to the back. And then you're going to pull that yarn over underneath both those strands with your crochet hook. So go underneath and pull through. And you can kind of readjust. And for our first couple, I'm just gonna leave them on my crochet hook for now and then we will transfer them to our knitting needle once we have a couple going. We look at the top. And you can see that this one right here is where our yarn is coming out of. So we move to the next one over, which is this. You can kind of see the horizontal V there. Go underneath from front to back, yarn over again. So underneath and around to back, pull through with that hook and then kind of wiggle to make sure that they're loose. And then you just keep doing that. Our yarn's coming out of this V here. So the next one over is this one. Go underneath both legs from front to back, Yarn over, pull through, readjust. You can release your tension yarn. Once you have four, you can slide them down to the end of your crochet hook and slip them without twisting them to your knitting needle. Go into the front loop like this and slip. Go into the front loop like this and slip. Go into the front loop and slip. And if your first stitch is loose, you can kind of pull on the tail to tighten it up. It will probably be a little loose for the first row or two, but you can always clean that up by pulling on it later on and weaving it in. So that was step one of our pickup rate, where you pick up one stitch for every bound off stitch. Now we transition from moving this way to moving this way. So for pickup rate number two, we're going to pick up and knit one stitch for every row. So if we turn and look, for example, at our front, 
each one of the V's refers to one row. So each one of these V's represents one row. So we can't just do a pick up one stitch for every row because we have more rows than stitches that we need to pick up. So when we pick up a stitch, you have your edge row, which looks a little bit funkier than the rest of your project. But in between your edge stitch here and the stitch next to it, which is this V right here, there's a hole right here. In order to pick up stitches, we're going to go into that space. You're kind of separating your edge stitch from the rest of your project. So that is what we're going to be doing. So go ahead and turn your work so that it's laid out like this where your projects are sideways. So remember how I said each one of these V's represents one row. So you have a V here. The way we're looking at it is sideways. But you can see that there's a V there. That represents one row. And this represents one row, and this represents one row, and this, and this, and this. We're going to pick up one stitch for each one of those rows. We're going to do the same kind of yarn over pulling through, but where we're going in is slightly different. So if you want to be able to look at it, you can kind of pull away your edge stitch from the rest of the side. If you pull it away, you'll start to see some holes. They don't look like V's. You're separating your edge stitch here, which looks a little wonky, but you're separating it from the rest of the project and you get a bunch of holes. Once you kind of pull apart your edge stitch from the rest, you should have a slightly bigger hole here in between your bind off edge and the rest of your project. So go into this hole from front to back, yarn over from underneath and pull that yarn over through that hole. Or you could also use the crochet hook method if you prefer. If you'd like an easier way to keep track of things, you can use a removable stitch marker and place it either in that stitch or just before it so you know that is your first one. You don't have to do that, but you can if you want. I'll place it down here so it's a little bit more out of the way. That was our first stitch. I'll show you one more time with the knitting needle and then switch to the crochet hook. We need to move to the next hole up, which is on the left here. Our yarn's coming out of this hole, so we need to move one more to the left, which is this one. So take your needle into that hole, which just separates our edge stitch from the rest of our project. Go into it from front to back like this, yarn over. And I like to use the tension in my left hand to kind of tighten that yarn over and it makes it easier to pull it through that hole. And then I just wiggle my needle to readjust it. So there you have it. That is how you pick up one stitch for every row. But let's say that you wanna work it with a crochet hook. So I'll start over. We have our bound off stitches here, but now we wanna use a crochet hook again. I'm going to kind of slide my knitting needle out of the way a little bit. You can use any size crochet hook that you want. We're going to be readjusting our stitches after we use our crochet hook. So it doesn't really matter if it's really small. Take your crochet hook from front to back. It's a little bit more fiddly with a crochet hook, I do have to say, but you can do it either way. So our crochet hook is in and I'm kind of holding my knitting needle out of the way. And then I yarn over that crochet hook like we did before and pull that yarn over through that hole. And then you wanna pull a big loop like this. Now you notice that this is not twisted. It's just a normal loop. I'm going to pull that loop and without twisting it, place it on my knitting needle and remove my crochet hook. Tighten up until it matches the tension of the rest of the stitches and can slide easily. And that is how you use a crochet hook. Since we're doing a one for one pickup rate, one stitch for every row, I move up to the next hole and go in from front to back, yarn over underneath and around to the back, pull through that hole, pull up a loop, so it's nice and big, and then slide that over the knitting needle without twisting it. Remove your crochet hook and tighten up. You don't want it to be too tight. You definitely want your stitches to be able to slide easily and you want them to be all about the same size. So that's how you do it with a crochet hook. Either way is totally viable. So you wanna pick up one stitch for every row, which is every hole. If we separate our edge stitch from the rest over here, you're picking up one stitch for every hole here. Move up to the next open space. My needle from front to back, yarn over, pull through and readjust. That's three. Move up to the next hole, yarn over, pull through, readjust. And you just keep doing that until you have done as many times as your pattern tells you. So now we're moving on to step three. So you're going to pick up and knit one stitch for every two 
rows. That means that you pick up and knit one stitch and then you skip a space. Remember how I said every horizontal V here is a row, which corresponds to the same thing as a hole up here. If I separate my edge stitch from the rest, every hole here is a row. So before we were picking up one stitch for every hole or every row. Now we're picking up one stitch for every two holes or two rows. You can place a marker here too if you wanna start counting. But what that means is that I go in and just like we did before, I go into the next hole, front to back, yarn over, pull through, readjust. And then instead of going into the next hole, we're going to skip it because we want one stitch for every two rows or two holes. So we need to skip it and go to the next one, which is this one. See how we're skipping the one in the middle and going to this one on the left? So skip it and go into the next, yarn over, pull through. So if you want, you could place a marker below your new pickup rate, it's totally optional. And then for rate number three, this is my first picked up stitch and then I skipped one. So I just picked up one and now I need to skip the next hole. So it's coming out of this one. Skip the next and go into the one after it. Yarn over, pull through, readjust. And then we skip the next one and go into the one after it. That is step three. So you pick up and knit one stitch from a hole and then you skip the next hole. So I've picked up one out of this hole. This is my next one. I'm going to skip it and go to the one after it. Front to back, yarn over, pull through, readjust. And you're going to get to your shoulder seam here pretty soon. I'll show you what to do when you get there. So here I picked up one, skip, go to the one after it, pick up, skip, go to the one after it, pick up, and then skip the next one, go to the one after it, and then there is a hole after that one right before my shoulder seams. I'm going to skip it and go to the other side. So this one looks slightly different, but if you turn towards the edge, you can kind of see that column of knit stitches here. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before where I kind of take that edge stitch, which looks like a wonky sideways V. I'm gonna take those two legs of that and pull them away from the rest of the panel and that will show you some holes. So you wanna find the one that's pretty close to the shoulder seam, doesn't have to be exact. If you're off by one or two, it's totally okay. So here I have my edge stitch V right here. It's kind of wonky, but that's my edge stitch. So if I look, at the very top, close to my shoulder seam, I can see kind of a wonky V right here. It's a little bit like that. I'm going to kind of use my fingers to wiggle around and separate that from the rest and there's a hole. So I go into that hole from front to back and I have separated my edge stitch from the rest. Yarn over and pull through. Might feel a little bit wonky, but it'll look like this. You can keep going and kind of pulling that edge stitch away Wiggle around with your fingers if you need to. It's a little bit tighter. This is the hole that our yarn's coming out of. Right next to it is this hole. We wanna skip it and go to the one after it. Yarn over from front to back, pull through, and keep separating it. Wiggle your fingers around to kind of find where that next hole is. So there's the next hole right here. We wanna ignore that and go to the one after it. And you just keep doing that until you have done as many times as your pattern tells you. Now step number four is the exact same as step number two, where you're picking up one stitch for every row or every hole. So our yarn's coming out of this big hole here, and this tiny hole next to it would be our next stitch. This is our last stitch that we're going to pick up every other. So we need to skip this one and go to the next, which is this big hole here. Go from front to back, yarn over, pull through. So now we're going to go every hole after that. It's coming out of this big hole here, and we need to go into the small hole. So from front to back, yarn over, pull through. It's coming out of this one, so we need to go to the next one after it. Yarn over, pull through. And you do that as many times as it tells you here for step four. Our final stitch should be the slightly bigger hole between your bind off edge here from your armhole shaping and the rest of your stitches. It's a little bit of a diagonal stitch that connects the two. That should be your final stitch. You wanna have this many stitches by now, which is four less than we're going to have in the end because we haven't done our four bound off stitches yet. So you wanna have this many right now. If you don't have enough stitches, let's say that you are three off, you can kind of undo 
until you get back to three of your rate number three stitches where you picked up and then skipped. And instead of skipping, you pick up one stitch for those holes and then you have picked up three extra. And let's say that you have two extra. You can pull out a few of your one-to-one -one pickup stitches here. Instead of going into the next stitch like you originally would have, you skip it and go into the following and skip the next one. That will get rid of two stitches. So do something like that. If you have extra, you can always fudge it. It does not have to be perfect. If you have one or two extra or are missing one or two, we can always fudge that in our decreases. So if you don't wanna pull back, one or two stitches is okay. We can work with that. You can just skip a couple decreases or work a couple extra decreases. Once you have the correct amount of stitches written here, which is four less than what you're going to end with, we go down to our bind off stitches. So you can kind of turn your work so that your bind off stitches are more horizontal. And then we're gonna do the same thing we did on the other side and pick up our bind off stitches. So we can see them here. They look like sideways Vs. Our first one is right here. We're going to go underneath both legs of it from front to back, yarn over like we've been doing and pull that through. You can use the crochet hook method if you prefer. Just go over to the next one, pick up and do that until you have picked up four. You are done. At this point, you should have between 48 and 66 stitches depending on your size and you are done with the pickup rate. So for our sleeve pattern, we need to work a setup row, which is a purl row. So go ahead and turn your work. Now the wrong side of your work should be showing, which looks like a bunch of purl bumps. And you'll have a ridge here from picking up your stitches. So now for your setup row, you're just going to purl across. And from here on out, we're going to work two different decrease rates. We want to create a tapered effect where we decrease slowly at the upper arm and then faster towards the wrist. So essentially you're just working a decrease row followed by a bunch of stockinette rows. So knit your right side rows and purl your wrong side rows. So you're going to work a decrease row, which will always be on your right side rows. It is a knit three, knit two together, knit to the last five stitches, SSK, knit three. Go ahead and knit three. And these decreases might seem backwards, but we're angling towards the edge of our work here because when we seam them together, it will be on the underside facing the middle seam. So we're going to work a knit two together. If you've never done one of these before, I have a more in-depth tutorial, but essentially you're going to go into the front loops of the next two stitches at the same time as if you were going to knit them. So just go into the front loops of two stitches. It should look like this. Yarn over, pull through both, and slide off. So you've just decreased one stitch, and then you're going to knit across until you have five stitches left on your row. And once you have five stitches left, we're going to work an SSK. So I do this slightly modified, but you can do it however you like. So I'm going to slip the first stitch as if to knit and the second stitch as if to purl. So go into the first stitch as if you were going to knit it, but just move it to your right hand needle. Go into the second stitch as if you were going to purl it, but just move it to your right hand needle. Now bring your left hand needle into the front loops of both of those stitches. So into the front loops of both of them, only the front loops like this, and then yarn over the right needle and pull one loop through. That has just decreased one stitch and then knit three. And that is a decrease row. So every decrease row will work the same way. And in between decrease rows are just, just plain stockinette rows. So a plain row is where you purl on the wrong side. So on this side with all the purl bumps, you would purl across. And on the right side, you're just going to knit across. So go ahead and work between 11 and five plain rows. And then you repeat that set. So the decrease followed by the plain rows. And once you've completed all of those rows, then you work rate number two. And rate number two is almost the exact same thing, except your plain number of rows is slightly less. So go ahead and do that, and I will meet you back here for rate number two, and then we will work the sleeve cuff. Once you've worked all of rate one, which for me is this chunk, it is time to start decreasing faster. We're going to have less plain stockinette rows in between each decrease row. So we start out slow because you don't want to decrease too much around your upper arm, but now that our arm is starting to get thinner towards our wrist, we wanna decrease faster. So this is the same thing that we did for rate one pretty much, just with less stockinette rows. So if you need a refresher, you can go ahead and rewind on how to work that decrease row, but go ahead and work rate two and I will meet you back here for the sleeve cuff. So once you've finished both decrease rates for your sleeves, it is time to switch to our rib needles and work our cuff. 
Your sleeve should look like a bigger version of this where you have your decreases along the outer edges and it starts to taper towards a smaller size at the wrist. You should be ready to knit a right side row, so your knit side should be showing. You want to grab your rib needles and we're going to work off of our gauge needles onto our rib needles in a one by one rib. And for row one, which is a right side row, we're going to work a knit one followed by a repeat of a knit one, purl one until you have one stitch left, which you will knit. My left needle is my gauge needle and my right needle is my rib needle. I'm going to work a knit stitch followed by a knit one, purl one repeat. So knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. And you just work a knit one, purl one until you have one stitch left. And when you have one stitch left, you're just going to knit it. You are done with your gauge needles and you should be working entirely on your rib needles from now on. Go ahead and turn your work. So now for row two, which is a wrong side row, you're going to work a purl one followed by a knit one, purl one repeat until you have one stitch left, which you will purl. So purl the first stitch and then work a knit one, purl one repeat until you have one stitch left, which you will purl. I've done my last knit one, purl one repeat, and now I need to purl the final stitch and go ahead and turn your work. And that's it. You just repeat those two rows four times in total for a total of eight rows of your cuff or until your hem is approximately one and a quarter inch or three centimeters long, and then we will bind off. Once you have finished all of your cuff rows, it is time to work our bind off. So I like to bind off in pattern. This is very similar to a standard knit bind off, but instead of all knit stitches, you're going to knit your knits and purl your purls. So to begin, go ahead and knit two. And now we're going to pull our first stitch over our second and off. So like we've done before, pull over and off. And now because our next stitch is a purl stitch seen by all these purl bumps, we're going to purl it. You can bring your yarn back to the back of your work when you're done, and then you slip the first stitch over the second and off. You want to be sure to be working a little bit loosely. You don't want your cuff to be too tight. After each bind off, you can kind of loosen that stitch on your right needle a little bit. And then our next stitch is a knit stitch because of all the V's in this column. So knit it. Pull the first over the second and off. Loosen up your stitch if you need to. Our next stitch is a purl stitch, so go ahead and purl it. Pull the first over the second and off. Next is a knit. And you're just alternating for the rest of the row and binding off. Remember to be pretty loose with your tension. Don't pull tightly after anything. You want this to be loose enough to get over your hand and sit comfortably on your wrist. And on our last stitch, we're going to knit it pull the first over the second and off. And for now you can kind of pull up a loop that is your last stitch and remove your needles. And then you can grab a pair of scissors and we are going to use this tail to seam our sleeves closed and the sides of our cardigans closed. So the tail from each sleeve will close up that side of the cardigan. You want it to be twice as long as that length. So I'm measuring from my sleeve down to where I picked up my sleeve and then down to the end of my cardigan. And then back, so that's double. And then I can go ahead and cut. Take this final stitch and pull it out. Should look something like this. So now that you're done with one sleeve, it's time to work the other sleeve and you're going to work it exactly the same way. So we go over to our other side, right sides facing up so the knit stitches are showing and we're going to pick up the same amount of stitches that we did for the other sleeve, work the sleeve the same way so you can go ahead and rewind to get a refresher for that. And then once you are done with that, I will show you how to block your cardigan. And now we're going to block our cardigan. There are a few materials that you will need. You'll need some kind of bowl or bin to fill with water and soak your project. In this demonstration, I'm just using a normal kitchen bowl, but my favorite is actually a collapsible bin. And then it's optional, but I like to use a wool wash. This one's my favorite in the scent fig, but there are other brands you can try, or if you don't have one, you can also use just a tiny, tiny bit of mild detergent. You'll also need a towel. I recommend a towel that can get dirty just in case the yarn bleeds. 
I like to use a beach towel, but just any cheap towel will do as well. You will also need some kind of blocking pin. My favorite are these Knitter's Pride blocking pin sets. These have several pins in them, so they make blocking really fast. They're a little pricey though, so you can also use sewing pins or T-pins are a really great affordable option. You can get them online or at your local hardware store. Then you'll also need a set of blocking mats. You can buy specific blocking mats online, but they're very expensive, so I like to use just kids foam play mats. You will need a measuring tape. Something that's small and flexible is preferable, like one for sewing or knitting in particular. So in order to block your cardigan, you'll need to soak it in water. I'm just going to use a big glass bowl. I fill it up with warm but not hot water, and I'm adding a little bit of soak wool wash, which is my favorite. I just swirl the water a little bit to mix in the wool wash. And then I place in my sample and I put it in until it's submerged and I hold it under the water a little bit and even squeeze it so that the water really soaks in. Just trying to make sure that I get most of the air bubbles out if I can. And now you can leave it to sit for anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes and then drain all the water and gently squeeze some of the water out of the sweater. So now I lay out my towel and I'm going to kind of spread my project out flat and I'm going to roll it up into the towel. If your project is very wet, you might have to do this twice, but I just gently roll it up and then I walk on it so that it gets all of the water out. I definitely recommend doing this with shoes on or slippers on so that your socks don't get wet. So I just stand on it a few times and then I unroll it. And if it's still soaking wet, I will flip the towel around so that I start on the other end and roll it up and repeat the process. But mine was pretty dry at this point, so I'm ready to pin it down. And I'm going to take my foam mats out I just lay down enough mats so that I have room to pin out my project. So I just kind of lay it out in the correct shape. I like to flip it so that the wrong side is facing up, get all my tails out of the way so everything dries a little bit more easily. So you're going to measure below the sleeves because in between the sleeves is, is shorter than further down the back. So do it towards the middle of the back. And I like to kind of flatten my ribbing Kind of stretch it out with my fingers. I'm just trying to flatten out the stitches so that they're not so scrunched. And now I take my measuring tape and I'm going to measure and try and match the exact measurements in the pattern. Measure down the middle of the back to the ribbing and measure along the middle of the back across from one side to the other. I'm trying to gently uncurl the edges and I take one of my blocking pins and I kind of gently uncurl the edges. I'm not pulling very hard because my measurements are very close. So I'm just kind of flattening it out a little bit and trying to create a straight edge. And I measure as I go. So that is the correct width right there. So I'm going to take another set of blocking pins and block the other side. If you want, you can pull it slightly out just so that it has room for the seaming. Your edges may be just slightly wider than in the pattern because you are going to be losing one stitch from each side during seaming. So now that I've got my width established, I'm just going to try and create a straight line on each side and measure between each pin. So I've got one on the top placed in and I'm going to measure to make sure that the bottom one is going to be placed correctly. It is, so I can just go ahead and kind of just gently create that straight line there. And I angle out my blockers just ever so slightly, but you don't have to. It's kind of cinching in at the bottom. So I need to straighten out the edges so that it doesn't do that. And every time I add a new set of blocking pins, I will remeasure and you can remeasure after every couple pins if you're using normal pins. This doesn't have to be perfectly exact. You're just trying to get it as close as you possibly can. It won't be super noticeable if you're very close. So the edges of my ribbing are kind of cinched in. So I'm going to try and straighten those out so that they're in a straight line to match the other two edges. So I just kind of gently pull them up, kind of gently pull them towards that straight line. And now it's time to re-measure my length. I was close, but my ribbing is a little bit cinched in. So I need to kind of stretch it down a little bit further. You can always remove pins if you need to but I'm just ever so slightly pulling the ribbing down just a little bit. And there you have it, that is the back done. So here I just kind of like to run my fingers over it to make sure there's no like scrunch stitches. And I also like to tap with my hands just to kind of get the stitches to bounce a little bit off of the ground and settle in. I don't really know how to describe it, but I feel like when I tap my hand on the mat a little bit like that, it helps the stitches settle. So now I'm gonna move on to the front and do the exact same thing. You can tell that these are a little bit more wonky because of the garter edging. So we're gonna try and create a straight line and measure the length from the shoulder seam to the cuff. You can do from like the edge of the shoulder seam, the edge closest to your front panel. 
So I want to stretch to make sure it is the exact same length and you'll have a gap in between your two front panels. And for this side, I'll show you how to use T-pins. These are the long version, but I also have shorter ones as well. You can also use sewing pins if you like. So I start up towards the shoulder seam and I want the edges to be flat. So my garter edge there towards the middle. I'm just kind of pinning every inch or so. I can go back and add more if I need. And I'm not pulling anything. I'm just really trying to get it to stay in place as it dries. These are going to be your seamed edges. So it doesn't have to be as perfect as the garter edges in the middle. So the most important edges to keep looking neat are the ribbed edges and the garter edge on your fronts because the others are all going to be seamed. So as you go, you wanna keep making sure that your length is measuring correctly. And the corner of my garter is just a little bit curled. I take my T-pin just to kind of stretch it out so it's a flat 90 degree angle instead of kind of rounded how it was. Now I can check the width. If I needed to stretch it, I could. And you can always readjust the length pins if you need to. So I'm going to put T-pins into the ribbing now and just kind of go around the outside. I want it to look nice and neat because this is what you're going to probably see more often is in the front. And as you're doing this, you want to double check the width so that you're not changing that drastically. If something's kind of pulling in like that, you might have to use several more T-pins to straighten out an edge if you need. You don't have to use a ton if yours isn't pulling or curling in a weird way. So I just keep measuring the width as I go, every few T-pins, and this edge is a little bit more curled, so I'm using more T-pins to keep it flat. But again, this is going to be a seamed edge, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And now I just kind of quickly fix the corner and this is looking a little bit wonky so I'm going to remove a few of the pins and replace them so it looks better. So that's how you use T-pins versus how you use the knit blockers. And when you're working the sleeves you just want to measure from like the middle of your back panel which is kind of the middle of that gap where you don't have a shoulder seam. You're measuring basically from the middle of that all the way down to your sleeve cuff and if you're going to measure the width you're going to go across the very top before you start working any of your decreases and then you measure the cuff as well and you just kind of create a gentle slope all the way down. The most important two pieces are going to be the length from the middle of the back and the upper arm width which will make your circumference. Other than that you can just kind of generally work your way down to the cuff. You might have to pull out the ribbing just slightly on the cuff but just simple like that. I don't need to do it along the pickup edge because it looks like it's sitting perfectly straight. So now you can just repeat that for the rest of the cardigan. I just kind of create straight edges and constantly check my measurements to make sure that the length and the width are all correct. And then I just let it dry naturally. So for a sweater, this, this can take anywhere from 24 to 72 hours. I advise against any kind of heat to make the drying fast because it can make your stitches shrink and then your sweater will be smaller than what you expected. So just let it dry naturally or with a cool fan if you really need to speed it up or a dehumidifier, but no heat. So when it comes to finishing your cardigan, now that it's been blocked, it's time to seam it closed. You can go ahead and kind of Fold your fronts down so that your shoulder seams are aligned and the sides are lining up together and your garter edging should be in the middle of your front. Here are your sleeves. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at the sleeve cuff and seam all the way down the sleeve and then turn and seam all the way down the side. So on your sleeve cuff, you should have a long tail. That's what you're going to want to thread onto a yarn needle. For the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to be using a contrasting color so that you can see what's going on a little bit better, but you'll want to use the yarn that's attached to your sleeve cuff. So in order to do this, I'm going to kind of fold my sleeve in on itself. It'll be a little bit easier since yours will be bigger, but I kind of fold it so that the inner seam is facing each other here. The first step is similar to what we did with the armhole pickup, where we go and find our edge stitch which if we uncurl our edge, is this kind of wonky upside down V. Upside down, it will look like this is our edge stitch because it makes a V, but because we were moving in this direction, it's actually upside down. So it would be this instead, which is wonkier looking, still has two legs here. So we're going to take that edge stitch, kind of hold the rest of your project and pull that edge stitch away, similar to what we did when we picked up the sleeves. And in between the edge stitch and the rest of our project, you have a bunch of these horizontal bars. So go ahead and do that separation of the edge stitch from the rest of the project on both sides. So starting down at the sleeve cuff, can I just pull it away? It doesn't have to be exact. So I've placed my contrasting color in the exact same spot that your yarn should be coming out of. So we're just going to be going into alternating sides. Since our yarn is coming out of the left half, we're going to go over to the right half and start. 
So I like to kind of find the bottom edge stitch area. This does not have to be perfect, but remember that this, these two legs here make up our edge stitch. So I follow it all the way down to our bind off edge. Just kind of go into the bottom corner and separate what kind of looks like two legs. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. This is just our initial setup. And then you can pull it through a little bit, but you can leave a little bit of a space. We will tighten this up later. And now we go over to the left half. You find kind of the first two horizontal bars. So if I pull my edge stitch away, wiggle my fingers around, this is where our yarn is coming out of, this bottom corner right here. And then if we go up, we find our first two horizontal bars. I like to go under two at a time. So here are your horizontal bars here and here. This separates our edge stitch from the rest of our project. Go underneath those two horizontal bars, moving away from you and pull through. And again, you can pull the yarn through, but you don't have to pull it tight yet. And now we go over to the right half. The horizontal bars should be kind of paired together. So if I wiggle around, I have a little one down here right where I started. I'm going to ignore that and go up to the next two. These two horizontal bars separate our edge stitch from the rest of our project. Go underneath them, pull through, and it should look something like this so far. It'll look a little bit messy, but after a couple inches, we will close this up. And then we go back over to the other side. So again, wiggle your fingers around to kind of separate the edge stitch from the rest. And this is where we picked up our last ones right here. So I go in between the edge stitch and the rest of our project and find those two bars. Those two horizontal bars go underneath, pull through, and then again, go to the other side, wiggle your fingers around to separate the edge stitch from the rest. And there should be a pair of horizontal bars above where our yarn is coming out of on this side. Go underneath both of those. So always just pull apart the edge stitch from the rest and you should have two horizontal bars in between. Go underneath and pull through. Just do this until you've worked a couple of inches. After you've worked a couple of inches, you're going to pull on this tail yarn to close up the gap. So if I pull on it, it will close up that gap. And if I pull too hard, it will get kind of scrunched up, which is not what I want. So what you do is you, you grab the section that you stopped at and you grab the start where the cuff is and you pull them away from each other. So there you have a closed seam. And so my yarn is coming out of the right half. So I need to go over to the left and we just keep going all the way down until your entire sleeve is closed. Every time you go over, you just kind of separate the edge stitch from the rest, wiggle around until you find those horizontal bars, go underneath two at a time, pull your yarn through, go back to the other side, wiggle around directly above where your last yarn's coming out of, you pick up the next two bars, and you just keep doing that all the way up your sleeve. So then every few inches, you can go ahead and pull on your working yarn to close up that previous section, it will kind of scrunch up like this. And every time you just pull it apart to make it lay flat. So go ahead and continue working until you reach just about this armhole seam. So I have reached up to the point where my underarm is and it starts to become the front panels. So I'm going to close up that final section, pull it apart if it starts to scrunch. We are going to start going down our front panels. Our sleeve is totally seamed together. It's now a tube instead of completely flat. We have a front panel up here and underneath it is our back panel. And you want the wrong sides facing each other. So the purl bump sides should be lined up together and the knit sides should be facing on the outside. And we're going to continue the same method of seaming that we've been doing. We're gonna go from the underarm down to the bottom of our sweater, lay it out any way that you like, but I'm going to lay it so that I can see both sides of my seamed edge. I'm going to do the same thing. I currently have my yarn on the right. I'm going to go along the edge of, this is my front panel on the left, but I'm going to go along the edge and kind of separate my edge stitch from the rest. I've come up to the pickup edge, so I'm just going to jump over that and go to the front panel. So if I pull the edge stitch away, I can see that there's two horizontal bars right here. I'm going to go underneath both of them. The same way that we've been doing all the way up the sleeve, but I jump over and I find the nearest section of two horizontal bars. So there's two down here and they should be clumped fairly close together. So if I move up, there's those that are clumped and those are clumped. So you're looking for two that are close together. And these are the two right here. They might be a little hard to see, but those are the first two on my right half. Pull the yarn through, go back to the left side, 
wiggle around and find the, the two horizontal bars above where our yarn's coming out of, which are these two right here. Back to the right side, wiggle around to get the edge stitch away. And it's these two horizontal bars that are kind of grouped together. And that's it. You just keep doing the same method all the way down. Now I have this gap here, so I'm going to pull on it to close it up. Cinches up my sleeve still, so I pull sleeve cuff away from my current section until it's flat, and then we keep going. So here on my right half, I'm getting down to the very end. And if you wiggle, you can really see the final two right here. Pull through, go back to the other side, pull apart. And it's a little bit harder to see, but I can find two final strands here. Kind of goes through our cast on edge and then pull tight. Stretch out if you need to make it less bumpy. And there you go. That is how you seam that edge together. You can cut whatever remaining yarn you have to leave a tail long enough to weave in. We have one sleeve that is fully seamed together. And you can go ahead and do the same thing you did on this half and seam the other side of your cardigan closed. So on the inside, it should look like this, kind of a raised edge, similar to our shoulder seam. So go ahead and turn your cardigan inside out once you've seamed both sides. And I will show you a little bit about how to weave in your ends. At the bottom of your seam that you just finished, you should have the tail you used to close it and your cast on tail. You can really start with either one that you want, but the easiest way to weave in your ends here is to weave it into this seam. So if I look, you can kind of see that it has raised edges. So I'm going to take one of my strands, my yarn's coming out of here. I don't go there, I go into a different section, go through that seam from right to left, but you could also do left to right. And then I go up a few stitches and I go back the other direction through the seam like this. I am not catching any of the actual part of my cardigan, just the seamed edge, the raised section. So you can't see my needle through the other side because you don't want your ends to be woven in through your project if you can avoid it. And you just do this a couple times, always going into a different section and moving up. And once you're done with that one strand, you can go ahead and cut it close. I've left about this much of a tail and I wove it in a couple inches. And then you just do the same thing with this strand. My yarn is coming out of here. So don't go back in there. Go through a different section of that seam and just kind of weave back and forth up. You don't have to pull super tight, just tight enough to get the yarn to go through. And again, you can't see that green strand on the right side of your project. You can only see it on the seam. You cannot see it on the right side of my project. So I just weave it in a few times, cut leaving a short tail. You could tie a tiny knot if you wanted to, if you don't feel like this is secure enough, but then you should have a strand connected to your underarm too. So if I go up from the bottom of my hem up to my underarm, this is my sleeve here, I have my underarm strand. I'm going to thread that onto a yarn needle. And if you have any hole, you can kind of use this to close up that hole. I'm gonna pull till it's snug so it closes up any big stitches that I have left. And I'm gonna do the same thing where here's my seamed edge. I'm going to go into that seam, pull through, go through a different section of my seam, pull through, and then I just keep going through sections of my seam back and forth a few times till I feel like this is secure. And then you cut it short the same way you did before. And that's really the basis of how you weave in your ends. You have some kind of edge like this pretty much everywhere on your cardigan. So up here by the sleeve cuff. So you just take your sleeve cuff tail, weave it through a yarn needle, and then weave it into the seam here. So that's applicable throughout the whole cardigan. So just use that same process throughout. And that was how you knit your first cardigan. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed knitting this cardigan with me. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe for lots more free patterns and tutorials. And it just really helps the channel out. And if you're looking for more knitting patterns, I have loads on Etsy and Ravelry, which are all linked down below. Thank you so much for joining me for this pattern. I will see you in the next video.